Welcome back to another plan with me video. We are going to get set up for May 2021 and I was really inspired by this color scheme from Beatrice Journals. I saw on Instagram, I was like, this is gorgeous. So I picked some pens, the closest that I have to kind of match that theme and we're going to get stuck into it just in case you are wondering about equipment. These pens are, I have two from Faber-Castell, the Pit Artist Brush Pens. One is called Pink Matter Lake 129, asterisk, asterisk. I don't know what the asterisks mean, but there are two of them. The yellow one is another Pit Artist Pen from Faber-Castell. It's Cadmium Yellow 107 with three asterisks this time and Tombow who don't give them a descriptive name just a number it's the um, dual tip brush pen 533 and my notebook is from notebook therapy just in case you were wondering it's the soft cover Tsuki and I love it it's amazing okay I wanted to get super minimal this month I did not want to be messing around with doodling and stuff because I am currently quite busy and uh, I just didn't have time you know I didn't want to be decorating stuff for the next month so uh here we go i'm just gonna use three colors and i'm gonna make stripes with them and that is the entirety of my theme for this month it's like a pink stripe a yellow stripe a blue stripe and there we are and these little like whiskers that are going on my headings so literally i'm just working out where i want my heading to go i'm drawing a stripe of each of these colors with the brush pen because the brush pen makes it come out in this nice thick line like a highlighter sort of thing and that's it. I'm doing the same thing for any kind of heading that needs a highlight behind it or whatever. I'm just picking which of those three colors I feel like I, I need to balance out the layout at the time. So I've popped down a stripe of pink and then I've put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday initials along that guy. And below that I'm putting in my calendar. So I'm not doing like a box kind of grid uh, table. I don't know what you call it. The normal bullet journal calendar where you like draw out a square for each day and then write things in it. I'm just kind of drawing the calendar and then below that I'm gonna add in the important dates that I need to remember. So any events, any dates, I'm putting birthdays and stuff all in that section down below. And I have added those since I filmed this. Um, you won't see them in this video, but I ended up adding them as three columns. So I did uh, events and birthdays and I actually can't remember what the last one was, but there are three columns, just so as you know. The other thing that you'll see recurring throughout this theme is the little corners. I don't know what to call them. I was thinking about like, you know how sometimes you can get picture corners to put on a photo and stuff like that when you stick it into a scrapbook, kind of like that. So it's just three squares by three squares. It's just a black line with a black Tombow dual tip brush pen using the not brush pen end, which is, as you probably know, if you've been to my channel before, one of my favorite things to do. I'm also using that as my lettering pen for all of my headings. Same one, just going over the top of everything. I always try to make sure I erase my pencil lines before I go in with colored pens because it seems to cover the pencil in a way that I can't erase anymore. So that's just a tip that I have learned from experience. Hopefully that will help you somewhere. Hey, if you are busy like me and you're thinking I just could not be bothered setting up for May, I've got you. You can go down to the description of this video. You can click on the link to my Etsy store and you can actually buy this download as a printable so that you don't have to do a thing for May. All you have to do is print it out. I have also set it up so that it will work for any month in any year, not just for May 2021, um, but there is a, a full version for May 2021 that already has numbers and everything on it so that you don't have to do anything but print and use. If you want to use it in a different month, say you're watching this in like, I don't know, June or maybe next year or something. Hello, future person, time traveler, hi. Then you can still absolutely use this layout. You just print it out and add in the dates that correspond to the month that you wanna use it in, and then you're good to go. And there are versions for 28 day months and 30 day months and 31 day months. So I got you covered, whatever the, the year is, whatever the month is, unless it's a leap year and it's February, in which case you're gonna have to use the 30 and then just not use one of the days because I, I didn't make a 29 day version. Cool. So I didn't talk about the goals page, but it was pretty self-explanatory. Um, I just write down goals. I divide them into three categories. I have two businesses that I run. So each of those gets their own goals category. And I feel like that wasn't good grammar, but I'm not gonna say it again. Um, and the other one is just for general life goals. My next couple of pages, I'm doing my usual gratitude tracker. I'm leaving. I haven't decided yet if it's gonna be one word per day, something that I'm gra gratitude, something that I'm gratitude for, something that I'm grateful for, 
or if it's going to be kind of two lines, we shall see. Um, I didn't put my numbers in quite the spot that I meant to, so this turned out a little bit wonky. Hey, it's my cat. It's Mitsu, always coming to inspect the bullet journaling process and demand to be fed partway through. Um, he's very good at that, but he's a sweetheart, so I'll allow it. That's the beauty of going back in for a printable version is that I can fix the things that I don't like about my layout. I also, in hindsight, probably wouldn't have gone for the full rainbow for each of these highlighty strips that are gonna be housing the dates going forward. I probably would have just done one color, maybe like the pink and the blue. And it's a lot, you know, there's a lot going on here. I don't think it's too much necessarily. It's still pretty chill and minimal, but uh, yeah, it's a lot. I'm also not using my go-to fine liner this time around. I'm trying out a different pen. This one is from Bic. Is it on the table somewhere? Yeah, there it is. So I can talk about it. This one is the Bic Intensity Fine. Uh, does it have the size on it? No, I'm holding it in my hand right now. It says black three, Korea, other things. Um, I usually go for the Sharpie pen and I love the Sharpie pen, but they are running out and my partner had a bunch of these and he was like, do you want these fine liners? And as if you'd say no to that. So, uh, I'm, I'm testing it out for this video and I really liked it actually. I think I hadn't realized how empty <laughs> my poor Sharpie pens were because uh, they've gotten a little bit sad from a great deal of use. And then when I got in there with these ones, I was like, ooh, very, very black ink, very easy to write with. Hmm. So yeah, I approve. Um, I didn't have any problems with smudging or anything. So that's always nice to know. The habits page I'm setting up pretty much the same way as I have the last couple of months where I have dates on the uh, horizontal axis and on the vertical axis I list a couple of habits that I am wishing to track. I haven't quite worked out what habits I'm going to track in May yet. I think I need to change it up a little bit from my April habits because uh, some of them I'm sticking to, which is awesome. And some of them I haven't done at all which is less awesome. And I, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to buckle down on those or if I'm going to take them off the list and think about them later. <laughs> uh, please tell me you can relate to that. Habits are hard, man. So I won't be filling in what my habits are in this video specifically, but uh, if you would like to see what they end up being, you can follow me on Instagram. There'll be a link down in my bio. My bullet journaling account is erinsmith.art, E-R-I-N-S-M-I-T-H dot A-R-T. Um, I have a photography account too because I'm a wedding photographer. In case you didn't know that, uh, there are some camera reviews on my channel. So if you're ever like, why is this bullet journal person I followed suddenly posting photography content? That's why. I am a multifaceted woman. I always like to have the initial for the day of the week on my habit tracker, on my gratitude tracker, which I haven't put it on my gratitude tracker yet, but I will pop back over to that page in a sec and fill it in. I just find it helps me. I am much more inclined to remember what I did on Wednesday than what I did on the 5th, you know? Maybe you can relate. So I always like to add that in. It's not in all of my printable layouts because I can't guarantee that I will know <laughs> what day it is for whatever month that you find it and decide to use it. But um, for purposes of my own journal, I always have that in there and it, is present in the May 2021 version of this printable. So if you jump on there, you will also have the luxury of that. I still can't find my little ruler. I have a cute little half, like 15 centimeter ruler that I usually use for bullet journaling stuff. And it's great because I can stick it in a pencil case and it can travel with me. And I haven't seen it in like a month now. So uh, that's a bit sad. I might have to get a new one, but for now this guy will do. He's just not very flexible, you know? So going across the middle of the page, this big metal ruler doesn't always feel the most comfortable, but it gets me by. Adding my corners in as the starting point because they're gonna frame the page here. These next two are gonna be my sleep tracker, which <laughs> if you watch my um, five tips for bullet journaling beginners video, I did say in there that I would never put a sleep tracker in my bullet journal. And then I did it a couple months ago so that I could have a really complete printable to offer thinking I will not use this. And I used it and I really enjoyed it actually because I I was like, I have a Fitbit that tracks me, tracks my sleep for me. I don't need to track it in my bullet journal. But then I never opened the Fitbit app and actually check how much sleep I got. Welcome back, Mitsu. Glad that you've come to supervise the ruling of the lines. Thank you very much, Mr. Whiskers. So having the sleep tracker in my journal has made me actually refer back to that data and check it out and be like, oh, look, you're actually not going to bed any earlier. Like you said you would. Hmm. Hmm. It's just made me really kind of more aware, I guess, which has been really helpful. 
I don't know why I'm working on the right side of the page before the left. I am not feeling very linear this setup apparently. And you know what? Last month, I absolutely adored my April layout. I thought it was gorgeous. I loved adding all of the doodles. I have to admit it took a long time as compared to this super minimal straightforward layout where all I had to do was draw some lines. I really enjoyed the simplicity of this and especially this expenses tracker. I usually have this kind of uh, table layout that takes up the whole page and Sometimes I need that much space to fit all of the things that I buy because I track every cent that I spend on this expenses page and then tally it all up and I put it into an overall expense tracker at the beginning of my bullet journal so that I can see where all of my money went across a year, which is really helpful when you're a business owner, but also just really helpful when you're a person who likes to keep track of their money. Um, I recommend it. And I saw a few minimalist versions. I can't really like refer to a specific one that inspired me for this because there were a whole bunch and I was like, oh, Instagram really is serving me the uh, minimal expense trackers and I'm loving it. So um, just kind of channeling a bit of that for this one. I'm thinking maybe I'll go back in and add a line at the bottom. I did that for my principal version on the expense trackers and I feel like it just kind of finished it off a little bit. Um, but we shall see. Maybe I'm lazy and <laughs> won't. <laughs> and could you blame me, to be honest? It's only going to get me through a month. Flipping back to the sleep tracker, I'm adding the days of the week down the left side along with the date, Saturday, first, Sunday, second, so on, so forth. And across the top, I'm going to put in the hours of the evening. I'm going to go from 9 p.m. on the first lot of dots, and then I, I go every second dot gets a fresh hour. So I've got a full spectrum of like two spaces to be an hour. So I can kind of rule off on each day of the week, which hours I slept from and until. I hope that makes sense. I did go to bed really early the other day, like 8.30, and my sleep tracker didn't go back far enough for that. So hopefully these numbers are okay. On the version in the principle, there is a blank version so that if you're a shift worker or, you know, you just keep really different hours to me, you can add your own hours in and it will not inhibit you from using the sleep tracker. Sleep is important. Please try and get good quality, decent sleep and enough of it. <laughs> it really helps. And the next one is my weeklies. I'm going to show you two because they are single page weeklies, which I'm usually a double page weekly spread kind of girl, but I don't know. I just thought it might be fun to try a running task list for a, a change instead of having to migrate my tasks each day because there are quite often things that I don't get to or things that I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do that today and that's pretty valid so I thought maybe if I have them on a running task list I have used one before it's been a while then um, I wouldn't have to cross them off I can just come back to it the next day and continue we'll have to wait and see if it's enough space it may not be I've only set up these first two weeks so far so if I find halfway through the month that I'm struggling with this layout I can still change it up so the way this is working is that little corner thing is just going to rule off where each day of the week goes. And then I'm just adding a little highlight at the top of in that um, first space of the box so that I can put in the name and the date for each day. Monday the 3rd, Tuesday the 4th. I have the 1st and the 2nd in my April setup because I like to keep my weeks complete. And then this other section on the other side is for tasks. And I've mirrored the layout on the opposite page so that the days of the week still go on the outside, the tasks still go on the inside because I hate writing on the outside edge of the right hand page because I am right handed and then there's nothing for your hand to lean on. And uh, it's just one of those funny little quirks about me. Uh, that way, most of the writing will be done in the task section. Only events and reminders, I guess, will go in the days of the week section so they don't need as much space. So we'll see how that goes. I mean, it's not a huge deal. I'm not like, I refuse to write on the edge of the right-hand page, but you know, I just prefer having some more of the book under my hand. Is this a thing for you too? Let me know. I'd be very curious. I'm showing you setting up the other side as well because it's super quick and I figured why not? Uh, here we go. I'm putting my notebook cover on the right-hand side, like under the book so that I've got something for my hand to rest on so that it doesn't just feel like it's fallen off a little edge of book cliff. Because I, I just feel like I have less control then. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It just is. I also think this would be really cute if you completely ruled off the tasks box. So it wasn't just sort of the corners. If you had a full box there, I think that would look really nice too. I might even try that for uh, my next weeklies after these first two weeks. So if you'd like to see that, once again, pop onto my Instagram. There will be some stuff there. I'm also on TikTok. 
and I can't decide if I like it or not. Um, I have my moments where I'm like, yay, TikTok, and one of my videos did pretty well, and some of the others are like not doing as well. So, you know, algorithms are fun. Let me know if you're on TikTok, um, like how do you find the people that you want to follow? I'm a millennial and I don't know what I'm doing. Help, help me out. Please help me out. <laughs> Here's the final flip through. I hope you guys have enjoyed planning with me for May 2021. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. It means the world to me that you wanted to watch my little video. If you would like to see more of this kind of stuff, please hit subscribe if you haven't already to stick around on my channel. I have a plant tracker video coming very soon. So if you're a fellow aspiring plant mama, like me or plant data or plant non-binary parenting person then um, do please stick around and I hope you also enjoyed the pink light that I got out for my b-roll shots um I just had a good time you know I was feeling myself it felt a bit 80s I'm also from the 80s I just wanted to really lean into that I guess I don't know once again my name's Erin and I'll catch you in another bullet journaling video or maybe photography <laughs> who knows very soon bye have a great May That's all I need.